First released back in 2012, Fez is one of those games. You know the ones where everyone says it's an absolute masterpiece and they won't hear a bad word said about it. Developed by Polytron Corporation and published by Trapdoor, but designed by the flamboyant Phil Fish, do we really need an old 2012 Xbox Live release on the Nintendo Switch? Yeah. <laughs> You knew that was coming. Man, this game's amazing. Why? Let's find out. Fez places you in the role of Gomez, who early in this tale is handed the baton, or uh, Fez, which grants him the power to manipulate the world rotating it in four directions and shifting it from the 2D to the 3D. And his aim is made very clear from the get-go. He needs to collect all of the cubes to restore the hexahedron to essentially stop the world from exploding. It's ripping itself apart. And as you play through, more references are made to the destruction going on behind the scenes. There are a few non-player characters, but it's this little guy who travels with you and gives you advice at every step of the way, who ends up becoming your closest companion. Fez is one of those titles that lets the player loose very early on. It introduces its base mechanic of rotating the world and your hunt for the elusive cubes begins in earnest. If you've not played it before, you'll certainly see the influence on latter titles like Monument Valley. After an introductory area which introduces you to the idea of those base mechanics like rotating to find hidden doors, gaining keys and also discovering Zelda style chests, you quickly advance to a much more open style game. There's a mapping system which will show you the areas where you've managed to find and discover all treasure and hidden items and those cubes give off a visual resonance as well as an audio cue to help you track down more elusive ones but you never feel under pressure in this game. There are no enemies, there's no punishment for death you're simply placed back in your last location and the reward comes from your own ability to solve what rapidly become extremely complex three-dimensional platforming puzzles. But there's always a sense of euphoria when you finally figure something out and you're within touching distance of one more glorious golden cube. As far as level design goes, there's a huge variety here, and as we'll go into in the visual section, the world never feels static, and you'll often find yourself heading off the beaten path just to explore, and more often than not being rewarded in some way. Now, other than the golden cubes, there are also anti-cubes. These are much more tricky to find, but these and other hidden areas constantly re-emphasize that feeling of exploration, and more often than not, you'll find yourself just smiling at the game as it oozes style and charm, but also nails almost every mechanic. Controlling your character with the left stick to move around, rotating that camera using the triggers, and then a simple jump system that also allows you to grapple and pull yourself up onto ledges works so well. When you combine that with the lack of punishment and rather a refocus on the player actually succeeding, it's a truly enjoyable game. And that's something we so rarely get to say even today. It's funny to read that the developer described it as a stop and smell the roses type of experience, and that couldn't be more apt. The only real critique I can imagine someone levelling at the game is that there are times you may find yourself getting lost, but there is a mapping system here, as well as the option to teleport between the two most recent teleporters you've found, and it's very hard to critique that when it's exactly what the developer intended, and is in my opinion what gives the game that feeling of whimsical freedom. In a world where games seem to get 10 out of 10 and classed as a masterpiece every other day, if you've watched the channel for more than 5 minutes you'll know we very rarely give top marks in any areas. We know games aren't perfect, but we're very selective. And if we do feel there's a negative that impacts gameplay in some even small and minute way, we will deduce a point or two. For Fez though, I would be clutching at straws. Gameplay is absolutely sublime. It scores 20 out of 20. I can level a couple of criticisms at the controls. There are a few moments where rotating the camera slightly glitches out, causing your player to drop when they should stand on a platform. Can be a tiny bit hit and miss. Control score, 18 out of 20. 
onto Visual's performance and audio. And if you haven't gathered by now, it performs beautifully on the Nintendo Switch. I've had no performance issues whatsoever, load times have been brief, and let's for a moment get a little bit nerdy. While the game might look simplistic on the surface, both Sean McGrath and Renaud Bedard programmed this ingenious method of converting 2D into three-dimensional voxels using just Visual C Plus, Express and XNA Game Studio. What you're left with is so much more than that. The color palette used in Fez, as well as the constantly shifting backgrounds, the parallax scrolling that works vertically and horizontally, that rotation mechanic, as well as some really clever artwork, mean that an area that can look deceptively simplistic can shift dramatically with a change of weather or time of day. or an opaque puzzle is suddenly revealed with a flash of lightning. And each of the puzzle areas has a very distinctive flavor. Some feel familiar or based on games such as Mario, while others change tone completely, feeling sinister and slightly macabre, all the way through to a better version of cyberpunk. The world is a joy to explore, and I'd say the soundtrack is equally good, created as it was by Richard Vreeland, and while classed as chip tune, it has that 80 synth sound, and just like the visuals, the tempo, mood, and ambience changes with each new area, stage, and seemingly rotation of that three-dimensional camera. As with the visuals, the game design, the programming, each area since launch has been critically acclaimed, and for very good reason. For visuals and performance, Fez scores 19 out of 20, and the soundtrack also scores 19 out of 20. Fez is going to take you around about 7 to 10 hours to complete if you're rushing through, but there are lots of secrets and those anti-cubes to go back and look for. It is a world I wish I could spend longer in, and I'm sure many people are going to be looking at the 2013 planned sequel that never was to be, in the hopes that good sales may make that dream a reality. At just over £10, at a base price of £12.59, but at the moment it's 10% off until the 25th, Fez represents excellent value. You can find it cheaper, but it fits every aspect of the Nintendo Switch. I give value 18 out of 20. So there we have it. Fez was great when it released, and it's brilliant almost a decade later in 2021. When times are the way they are, there is a need for this kind of game. One that puts a smile on your face that doesn't punish you for messing up, and reminds you why you play games in the first place. It gets a switch up score of 94% which is nice after Battle and Wonder World. Let us know down in the comments, will you be picking this one up on the Switch? Did you play it back in the day? And is it as good as you remember? A big thanks to the developer and to all of you who watch the channel. And if you enjoy the content, then make sure you stick around. Thanks to our patrons who support us each and every month. All the links to that are down in the description. And as always, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!